Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Vlogmas Day 12. And today I want to associate my Vlogmas with something that I talked about before, which is dealing with um, having a stillborn and loss. So I found this pamphlet at a church, um, and it's by Care Notes. Take one and take heart, give one and give hope. So it's called The Four Tasks of Grieving by Carol Lubering. When the person you love died, you probably weren't even sure you could make it through the funeral. You did make it, but only because you found yourself surrounded by support. Well, sometimes. Sometimes you're not supported at all. Friends and family members cried with you. They shared their memories of the person who had died and made memorial gifts in his or her name. Those good people offered a lot of practical help as well. Bringing in meals, offering to babysit if that was among your needs, running errands, helping with the details of the funeral. So this is not really resonating with me, but maybe it's resonating for someone who's watching my channel, so I'm going to keep reading it. A few weeks later, the phone stopped ringing, and thank you notes were written, and the relatives had all gone home. The whole world seemed to have returned to normal, the whole world that is except your corner of it. You found yourself swept away by a storm of emotions, disbelief, sudden stabs of pain or floods of tears, a paralyzing inability to accomplish anything, maybe some smoldering anger. You may have begun to think you were losing your mind. I can relate to that in that like sometimes tragedy happens and people will come out of nowhere and then in just a short amount of time then everybody's gone working your way through everything you feel is perfectly normal you're not crazy you are grieving grieving is the long and difficult task of letting go of someone who has died and rebuilding your life without that person's physical presence it may be the hardest thing you have ever done but it is absolutely necessary this care note will describe four tasks that will help you help you move along the road to recovery so I've never read this so we're reading this together allow time for the reality of your loss to sink in. The heart is a slow learner, cannot be weaned from its tender habits overnight. Expect to find yourself thinking of something you must remember to tell the person who is no longer with you or seeing something you think would make the perfect birthday gift. You may hear that person call to you in the night or you may start to follow someone down the street before you realize it's a stranger. Be patient and gentle with yourself. If you were sick, you wouldn't push yourself to get well some people do now too your energy level is likely to be lower than usual put fewer demands on yourself of course there are things you have to do but you can tackle them slowly and congratulate yourself every time you manage to check something off your list however small free up your calendar as much as you can go where you have to and keep necessary appointments but right now the most important task you have is to grieve your loss the only thing that i would say differently from that is that like I feel like when I'm going through something, it's easier for me to actually stay busy than to like make my um, schedule free. But I guess if they mean by like free your schedule so you can do other things um, and spend your time like doing things that occupy your mind, then that makes sense. This, the uh, second point is gather support. The understanding you need is most likely to come from someone who has been there. Where do you find such a person? Start with someone whose loss is not recent, someone who seems to have recovered from their loss. It needn't be someone you know well. Even a fairly casual acquaintance will quickly grasp your need the minute you say how confused and troubled you are. Consider looking for a support group. Many have a specific focus, the loss of a spouse or a parent or child of any age, a loss caused by murder or suicide. Look on the internet and in the yellow pages under social services and check out both government and religious agencies. Many groups whose concern is a particular disease such as the American Cancer Society also offer support for people whose loved one died of that illness. See what your faith community can do to help. Many have volunteers who not only help plan funerals but will also walk with grieving people as long as they are needed. Some offer special prayer services at certain times of the year. And it goes on to say that my own does a blue Christmas prayer service for people who can't muster much ho-ho. 
and um, there's a little side note that said, I started keeping a grief journal. To it, I confided all the feelings no one seemed to want to hear about. Slowly, very slowly, I began to see some signs of progress. I realized that while my husband really was gone, I could very slowly rebuild a life without him. I will always miss him, but I also feel a lot of gratitude for the time we had together. So, I can relate with number two because that's what I want to offer you guys in even talking about what's happened to me is I want to offer that support and it's interesting that this pamphlet said, you know, however small, even an acquaintance because like, I don't really know any of you guys, but if I can be there for you, then I want to be. You can't rebuild your life in an instant, but you can take... I don't know. That kind of just gets cut off. All right, the next part says, consider professional counseling. A clergy person might be able to provide help or your doctor can make a referral. Check local social... Okay, we already know that. Don't forget the family members and close friends who share the pain of your loss. If they are also new to grief, they probably can't offer the wisdom of a professional counselor, but they can commiserate with you and give you the assurance that you are not alone in your sorrow. With them, you can enjoy sharing precious memories of the person too many folks avoid mentioning at all. Number three, make adjustments in your life. The ties that bound you to the person for whom you are grieving are woven of many intricate strands. You shared memories and interests, activities and friends, perhaps for many years, perhaps for far short, too short a time. However much you may want to shut out the memories just now, they are precious treasures you will one day be glad to have. But right now, they are painful reminders everywhere you turn. You can't rebuild your life in an instant, but you can take a small step or two at a time. So that's what it said. Try making some changes in your routines, activities, and connections with others to keep the pain from cropping. It says cropping, not creeping. Creep, cropping up so often. Rearrange your living space a little. It may feel like an alien space as it is. If it looks different, you can begin to revisualize home. Try sleeping in a different room or eating your meals in another spot. If you're thinking of cleaning out your loved one's closet, get someone to help you start. You don't have to do it all at once. In fact, you may want to keep something, a favorite sweater perhaps, to snuggle up with. You may want to avoid the places you strongly associate with your loved ones, at least for a while. Choose a new, a new path for a walk. Stay out of his or her favorite store. Avoid for a time your favorite restaurant. Take in the latest film at an unfamiliar theater. Explore some new activities. Try your hand at a new hobby, perhaps, or join a club that focuses on an interest you've never explored or align yourself with some unfamiliar association. You may not find a perfect fit immediately, but you can always try another direction. Neither are you making a lifetime commitment. You are free to drop out when the effort no longer meets your needs. And that's, that is cool though. I rearrange my house a lot when like if I, even if I have a lot on my mind, I'll rearrange my house or move my furniture and it does make me feel better. Let me know if you guys resonate with that, if you guys move your house around too when you're going through something. In the corner it says, grieving is a lot like being in labor. New life comes at the cost of hard and painful work from a parent who lost a child. I guess I'll finish it. <clears throat> a volunteer job may give you an outlet for the care you once lavished on your loved one. Years ago, a few women whose children were killed by drunk drivers found mad mothers against drunk driving, whose efforts to educate and stiffen law enforcement have no doubt saved many lives. You may not change the world to that extent, but you will feel better for discovering that you still have something to give. And the last point is find ways to express your loss and memorialize your loved one. Give your emotions an outlet in a journal. Make a habit of reading back over it and it will map your journey through grief. You can spot the things that send you into a tailspin and learn which triggers to be careful of. You will also be able to see signs of recovery, rarely at first, but they will be more apparent as time moves on. That would be hard for me to write in a journal things that happened to me or like how I felt about it and then to reread it. But I can see where it could be beneficial and you know figuring out what your triggers are but that would take a lot to like really pay attention to what triggers you because it's triggering um write letters to your loved one too i have done that before though like if i had a lot on my mind or something but i didn't really you know i wasn't ready to say it to them or whatever like i've written 
a letter to someone whose absence from me, you know, sent me into a grieving state, and so I wrote them a letter, and it helped. Um, and some people, like, burn people's stuff or, like, the gifts that they've given them, but I've never done that, and I don't know if it would help me or if I would just be, like, trying <laughs> trying to get it out of the fire really quickly to save it because, like it said, like, you do kind of want to save, like, a memory, but... Um, pour your heart out pour your heart to him or her you can also do the same with God in prayer you might want to make a ritual of burning the letters oh, that's so funny it said that imagining that the rising smoke is carrying them toward heaven maybe I should try that that's so crazy that the, that was just the next sentence I honestly didn't read that first set up a small memorial space in a private corner with a picture and some tokens that recall your relationship put that favorite sweater there and provide a comfortable chair go there as often as often as you need to evoke the presence you will always carry within you if you designated a charity for memorial gifts at the time of the funeral continue to support it as much as you can tell family members to put that on your wish list for birthdays or holiday giving you can also commit your memories to paper, not only for your own sake, but also to enrich the memories of other people to whom this person was dear. Think of it as creating an heirloom, not only for the people who share your sense of loss, but also for future generations. However dear the person you have lost, you have not lost the memories you spun together. Neither have you lost the impact that person had on your life, the values you learned, and the interests you developed. What you have lost is a physical presence. As you do the hard work of grieving, you will begin to make peace with that loss and find comfort in your belief that the two of you are held together in the hands of God. So that is the four tasks of grieving. Um, and I can relate with a lot of it. I kind of want to, without sharing too much, I kind of want to try that whole burning burning things and seeing if I can let it go as the smoke rises so um thank you guys for joining me let me know if you've ever tried any of those things to get over grieving um if you've tried any of those things and they didn't work or if you tried any of those things and they did work um and yeah I hope you guys are having a good day and um happy vlogmas guys later